Have you discovered anything new? Have you discovered anything? You'll notice the speaker said, didn't say anything new about you, about the world, about the universe, about your mind, about life. Didn't say anything new about any of these things, these already informative, knowledgeable things that you know about. Have you discovered anything new outside of these things? Didn't say about God. Didn't say about consciousness. Didn't say about breath. Didn't say about atheism. Didn't say about skin. Didn't say about slugs. Have you discovered anything new outside of these things? Your mind says, it's, it's not possible, you see. It's not possible to discover anything new outside of what you're saying, Mr. Speaker. Okay, so let's come to some sort of agreement. What the speaker is saying, have you discovered anything new outside of space and time? Your mind says, it's not possible. We are space and time. We are that. What you are talking about? Yes, you are space and time. So you are the universe. You are everything that has apparently been discovered. So you are here as whatever it is before we gave it a name, before we gave it a title, before we gave it a a, a, a discovery. Uh, what is it when um, Einstein or Newton, great gravity, what is it called? Uh, I don't know. An individual component of the whole. Because gravity is only an individual component of the universe. Only apparent to earth, as we know it. As we know it, you see. Until we discover it, we won't know it. So we're going to go and discover into, into space to see if we can find a planet that has gravity. And then we have two components. Bit by bit by bit by bit, we're discovering that what has already been discovered. So let's talk about within space and time. What have we discovered? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Oh, there's a, a cascade of minds saying, speakers deluded. <laughs> We've discovered so many things. We've discovered the color of apples. We've discovered gravity. We've discovered Einstein's theories. We've discovered um, geology, uh, what happened a million years ago. We've discovered planets. Not new. Not new. Gravity, before it was called gravity, before Isaac Newton dropped an apple and gave it a name, it was always there. Gravity existed, whatever gravity is, ex existed before we gave it a name gravity. The apple, of the color of the apple always was there before we gave it the color, the name, the color of the apple, or the color of the apple. The dinosaurs or the geology or what lies in the earth crust is all is there. We have to dig to dig to find something that's already there. The spaceship goes into the into space and the two pilots are saying, Yeah, there's Saturn, there's Uranus, there's Neptune, there's Venus. Everything is here. Oh, what's that? That's a new planet. We've discovered it. It was there. It's not a discovery. In time, nothing can be discovered as new. Nothing can be discovered as new. 
even the theory that in human, let's not, let's, let's not waste our time going beyond space and time. Let's use this time and discover so many things about us. We've discovered, you know, biologists have said, you know, these things are called fingers. Yeah, we've discovered them. Yeah, we've given them names. They were there. They came on their own. They appeared on their own. The, the planet appeared on its own. We didn't discover the spaceship, we built it. The question is not what we built, what we do, what we what we um, achieve as humans. The question is, have you discovered anything new? Not about you, not about the planet, not about God, not about spirituality, not about religion, not about wood, not about iron, not about the five elements, not about life before, not about life coming up, the future and the past, not about anything that your mind knows about. And when your mind knows about the new planet, when the astronauts come back and say we've discovered a new planet, we're going to call it Newpy, after New Planet, or the name of the astronauts. That's a new planet. Newpy. Oh, it was there. They never named though. It's not new. If you discover God, if God walks out of the universe and into this planet, makes himself known, is he new? Always there. The mind only knows what it knows. The mind only knows time and space. Have you discovered anything beyond time and space? Who can discover it? What can discover it? Too lazy. Let's do it the old-fashioned way. Let's follow every... What is evolution, you see? Evolution. Does that evolution mean you have to do exactly as your forefathers, as your predecessors? No. Evolution means we don't do it their way. We find new ways. And Ramana Maharshi found the newest way. Ramana Maharshi discovered the newest way. And he was unable to share it. Because he went beyond space and time. As did Buddha. As did Christ. As did all others who have discovered something that is not new, is not old, is not in time, is not a component or a constitution of space, not consciousness. But is that what it is? What can we go beyond space and time? We're already beyond space and time. The mind, if we, when we use it, when it, we appear to think we are it, becomes space and time. Mind is the becoming of space and time. Mind is that what gives the names to the planets, thinks it has to do something within this projected world to find something about something that does not exist. Names, times, places, identities, um, God's consciousness. All of that is already here. You see? So we're not denying it. Roman Maharshi did not deny God, did not deny um, consciousness, did not deny space, did not den deny the universe. Just said, no point. No point in trying to discover something that's already here. Most want to find God because they don't believe it is here, because they don't know what it is. So they have to go into a spaceship, into the universe, to prove it, to justify it, 
And then they come back and say, oh my God, we found God. We discovered God. No. How can you discover God? It was here. But it was there. Well, is there hundreds of gods? Did that God make that bit? And this God make this bit? And that God make that bit? The story evolves from something that appears to be discovered. The story evolves from that point. The ones to believe, the beliefs, the hopes, the attachments, the associations to the predecessors. Uh, that what we have to think, the mind thinks, call, follow, copy, paste, build, move into something, discover it, already there. The ego hates this. The ego despises that it's been confronted. It's been put up on the stand, on the box, having to argue against itself. Ego hates to be questioned. I discovered the mobile phone. Built it from components that were already there. There's no such thing as discovery. Scott of the Antarctic goes and discovers the South Pole, North Pole, whatever it is. It was already there. Gave it a name. Let's call it the South Pole. Christopher Columbus discovers whatever country. Spain, Africa, Australia. I've discovered this new country. It was already there. Just didn't have a name. We've discovered a secondary galaxy. We've actually went into the galaxy. We built this spaceship that went for thousands and thousands of light years. Light years, space and time. And there's another universe. There's two, 100%. We've taken pictures. It's new. It was already there. Anything in space and time is already there. Because it cannot be new because we believe in old. We believe in not there and there. What can discover that that is beyond space and time and understand it, know it, realize it, but not able to use any emotional awareness, imagery, vocal, sensory, written, elements, ways to share it. And the listener says, well, what's the point if you're not going to tell me? Because when I tell you, it's not even a discovery. It's definitely not new to you. Have you discovered something new that has never been shared, can never be understood by your mind? And your mind continues to fight its way and say, well, what's the point? You won't know the point until you know. One of the great things about discovering things, Einstein, and I'm not dismissing these people, is they did something. They actually went out to do something to try and discover something, to try and enhance their life or their ego or their mind with, didn't waste my life. I discovered Neopi, or whatever that planet's name was. But the real discoverers, the only discoverers, are that what removes the idea that anything can be discovered, removes the idea that there's anything to discover, that there's anything to know, there's anything to build, there's anything to do, there's anything to think or imagine or fantasize about. That, what discovers that, shocks itself in the mirror of that discovering that, meaning that discovering itself, and say, wow, I know what the speaker's speaking about. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to discover. There's nothing to think about. 
There's nothing here except I. I is beyond space and time until I says am. And when am looks around as I am, it sees an image of itself everywhere. But the predecessors say, are you going to spend your whole time looking, observing? We have things to do. The system, the society, the world, the, the kings, the queens, the generals, the prod, the army, the politicians, the fathers, the mothers, the gods, the satans, the aliens, they all want us to do something. And therefore I am a discoverer. Discovering that what is already here. Nothing new. Find you. Discover I. Who is I? Space and time has to be seen through. This is a space body, a time body. Space meaning it's made up of little atoms and molecules and there is space within these atoms and molecules and they're mingling and mingling and mingling so they are moving, they're creating time they're, but they're within space. There's forms and formlessness is creating time within space and I can't get through. I just can't get through. What's going on? What's going on? Deny that there's space and time. Deny that there's molecules. Deny that there's atoms. Deny that there's a body. Deny that there's a life. Deny that there's me. Deny that there's a person. Deny that there's you. Deny that there is an I. And as Ramana Maharshi says, the minute I dies, something truly lives beyond I.